Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Alex and welcome back to a brand new video. Today we're going to be going over how not to suck at Rainbow Six Siege. Now, since Rainbow Six Siege is a very, very, one might say difficult game, there are a lot of different things that you need to know and a lot of different things you need to learn about many different topics. So, in today's video we're just going to be going over the basics of attacking, things you need to know, things that are important, every time you go into an attacking game. So, let's get started. So, one of the most important things when you're attacking is to know exactly how much time you have. Time is of extreme importance in this game because if you run out of time, you lose. Now, when you're attacking, the prep phase is of extreme importance because this is where you can find out where the objectives are and uh, then you know where to go. And when you find out where the objectives are, you can figure out how you're going to get into the building. Now, when you're playing in ranked, this is this is pretty important. You want to try to save your drones if you can, because once you've pinged all of the defenders and you know where the objectives are, there's no point to keep your drone in the room. You're just going to risk it getting found and destroyed. But if you can have two drones during the action phase, it can be pretty key to winning the game or the round. Um, once you spawn in after the prep phase, you will have to approach the building. And the most important thing you want to watch out for at this point in the game is spawn peekers. A lot of people like to spawn peek and they'll just bust out a window and they'll shoot you from inside the building or they'll run out on you. Um, people do that a lot on border when you spawn in valley and it's just all around a bad time if you're not watching for it and you get several people on your team killed. Um, then you want to find your point of entry and you want to make sure it's close enough to the objective where you're not running the entire length of the map And if you do choose to enter on the other side of the map than the objective You want to make sure you're moving quick enough to get to the objective before you run out of time um, It's also very risky to actually enter inside the objective room because people are probably going to be watching those windows and you'll probably get absolutely destroyed before you can even get inside the building. Uh, and going along with that, it depends on what operator you're using. Different operators will have different play styles and then you'll have different points of entry. Most of the time you want to spawn with a group of people, two or three at the most. When you're going around through the building and you're not sure if someone's watching a door or a window or if they're right around the corner, I came up with a little saying to help you guys remember when in doubt, drone it out it's important to know where the enemy team is because if you don't know where they are you could get snuck up on and then you can get your entire team wasted by a single defender another important thing when you're getting close to the objective rooms to watch out for roamers these are going to be people like cav or vigil or alibi basically any three or two speed operator on the defending team some people roam as three uh, three armors. I don't know why some people do just watch out and use your ears Hearing is very important in this game You have to be able to hear what's going on because it'll give you audio cues That'll help you know where an enemy is one of the most important things when you're entering a room is to check the corners Because a lot of people will hide in corners waiting for you to enter and then they'll just blast you the second You get in their line of sight and you can't do anything about it Especially if you're not even looking in the corner where they're at so you always want to check your corners well, another important thing is to check where the cameras are, and you won't just know where the cameras are when you first play the game because that comes with more time and experience when you play the game. You'll know where the cameras are on the different maps and you'll be able to shoot them and you won't get spotted. But if a camera spots you, it'll ping you for the defending team and they'll know exactly where you are and they'll know who you are. And that's something you wanna avoid if possible. So if you see a camera, you wanna take it out. If you have a silenced weapon, that would be preferred to a louder weapon because that way they only know the camera's gone. They don't know from where or who it is or anything like that. Another thing that's important, and once again, this comes with time as you play the game, is map knowledge. You need to know how to get to places quickest. Um, and you're not going to be able to do that if you just kind of, you know, always follow your teammates and never go off by yourself and never, um, you know, learn the game for yourself. If you always do what people tell you, you're never going to know what to do in a, an intense situation. One thing you got to watch out for is rotation holes because the defenders will put rotation holes in between bomb sites if you're playing bomb, which would be ranked or quick match if you're playing... Uh, bomb on quick match or just random rotation holes throughout the map that some roamers can put down because they can sneak through those pretty quickly without you noticing and you can use those to your advantage at some point in the game another thing you want to watch out for is murder holes these are very 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 dangerous and they're kind of difficult to spot if you're not used to them 
Basically what a murder hole is, is it's a tiny hole that somebody hits in a drywall maybe once or twice and they can see pretty clearly through it if they have an ACOG or even if they're just using a normal sight. And if you see one, you want to watch it carefully and if you see anybody moving behind it, you can shoot that and you'll be able to shoot through the wall and kill them. But if they're looking through that and you don't notice it or you don't do anything about it, they can kill you very easily through it and you're not gonna know where it's from. Another key thing when you're attacking is to know who the defending operators are and what each of them do, what their special gadgets are, their stats and all the weapons that they're using. This can tell you what counters you need and it can tell you what to watch out for as you're going through each individual round. Once again, this will come with time as you learn the operator's names, you will learn their abilities, and eventually you will learn their guns, maybe from the kill feed or even the sound of their weapon. One of the most important things about Rainbow Six Siege is you need all the communication possible with your team. You need a lot of teamwork. You want to make call outs that people will understand and don't just say there because they're going to start spinning around wildly not knowing where you're talking about and end up getting shot. That's one of the useful things with the ping system in the game is you can press a button and it'll put a little marker down where you are looking at and you don't even have to say anything. Granted, it is a lot easier and it is a lot clearer on exactly where people are or where people might be if you actually say where you think they are. But callouts are another thing that comes with time. As you play the game, you will get better at callouts and you will know more of them. One of the most important things in this game is to never go off by yourself when you're attacking. And this is for a couple of reasons. One, if you are going off by yourself, you are extremely vulnerable because if you lose a single gunfight, there's nobody on your team that's over there. You especially don't want to go off by yourself if you are playing on bomb and you have the diffuser because then your team has to search the map and get over to you to get the diffuser. Whereas if the diffuser is with your team, they can easily pick it up. And the main reason you don't want to go off by yourself if the enemy team or the defenders have a caviera. If the defenders have a caviera, you're in big trouble if you go off by yourself because if you don't kill her and she knocks you, she can do an interrogation, which is one of her special abilities. And if she interrogates you, it will reveal the exact location of all of your teammates for about 10 seconds. And this is not good because then they can get shot through walls, they can get run out on, all sorts of bad stuff will happen. Make sure you stick with at least one other person. There's one exception to this if you are playing Nock because Nock is an anti-roamer and she is very quiet. If you are good as her, you can go off by yourself. Just do your best not to get killed by a cab. And it's always good to have a basic strategy for your attack, whether you are coming up with counters for different defending strategies, counters for specific defenders like Bandit or Kaid, you can use Thatcher or Kali to destroy those devices, and then you can use Thermite or Havana to hard breach your way into the objective room or wherever it is you're trying to go. One of the main things in this game that is different from a lot of other games is the hearing and the audio cues. I mentioned this before, hearing is one of the most important things in this game. You need to be able to hear what's going on unless you're just screwing around playing for fun and then it doesn't matter a whole lot. But if you're playing ranked, you need to be able to hear and you need to be able to listen to footsteps, reloading sounds or anything like that. Any audio cues that can help you at all. Those will be very beneficial to you if you can decipher where they are coming from and what they mean. Another important thing when you're attacking is to watch out for different traps, but because there are several different types of traps and several different strategies people use with those traps, there's a lot of different facets you have to know about them. I'm gonna be doing traps in a separate video um, hopefully that will be coming out pretty soon, so stay tuned for that. Um, that's about all I have for this video, guys, so if you notice anything that I missed or think I should have added something that I didn't, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I will be very interested to see if you guys have anything to say about that. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash the like button down below and subscribe if you're new. I'll be coming out with more videos like this sometime in the future. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.